saying that uh, with a win here, Magnus has a 93% chance of qualifying. And here we go, the game has started. The game has started. We can't quite see Magnus Carlsen yet, but we see his opening few moves. And it's the Sicilian defence, something that Magnus has been relying on ever since his World Championship match in 2018 against Fabiano Caruana. And uh, here we go, just a very quiet line actually. White not going for the open Sicilian. Instead, bringing his bishop out early. White is the first to castle. Black there, just pushing a pawn. And now we do see the first trade of the game. Bishop takes knight, that is a check. And Black has doubled pawns. But Black does have the bishop pair and a pawn sacrifice early in the game. Levon Aronian giving up a pawn in the middle. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, this is actually an idea that uh, Van Forest played um, uh, recently. He played this pawn sacrifice as a new idea. And I think he beat Prague with this e5 move. And you give the pawn up, but look at Black's pawns. They're just straggling there. They're so weak. And uh, it's a nice positional way to play. Uh, I've always thought White should be doing okay here, so it'd be interesting to see what Magnus' uh, idea uh, on the black side of this is. Obviously, being very aware of that game by Van Forest. Yeah, um, as you mentioned, Van Forest there, he was helping Magnus in the World Championship match, so yeah, these top players, they sometimes they share ideas, sometimes um, you see them employ the same idea with White and then with Black, and uh, right now, Black is a pawn up, but as you mentioned, ugly, ugly pawns, especially those double pawns on the C-file. We came up with a rhyme, Simon, a couple of days ago. Double pawns are troubled pawns, and those black pawns, ugly. Mm. Now. And uh, just looking at the database in front of me, I can see that Magnus has also played this particular position with the white pieces. And uh, in an intriguing fact, Levon Aronian played this particular position with the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen in the gold money. Queen out, bring the white bishop out, and some real targets for the white pieces. Yeah, I guess one player I've seen who really loves the bishop pair out of any world champion is Magnus Carlsen. I mean, I know you do as well, David, and probably you as well, Yvanko. I'm, I'm a bit more of a tricky knight kind of guy. I love, you know, throwing the knight about and trying to trick my opponent. But maybe he's gone for this system because black has the two bishops. Um, but, you know, if white can win a pawn back, black is going to be in a lot of trouble. So, you know, then there'll be no material disadvantage. And you can see after this rook move, that pawn uh, on e5 in the center of the board is starting to be targeted. So.
just going to try to outplay white using the fact that my bishop is better than the, the white knight. Actually, I think this is Magnus just trying to escape the game with the draw. Okay. Uh, because the pawns have just disappeared. There aren't sufficient pawns left. And look at Magnus yeah. reacting there. He did eliminate Harry. Simon, you must be annoyed about that. Um, he went for a pawn trade, but he gave up a pawn. Well, he gave a pawn back in the process. And now, if the rooks do disappear, he does feel like black's going to take too long with the black king to go after those white pawns. Feels like everything's just going to get eliminated. White's knight can even give itself up for some pawns later on, and it should just be a draw now. This is one case where the more pawns that get exchanged, the nearer to a draw you do get. Um, I know Lev avoided this earlier, but uh, in general, you just want to get the pawns off the board because you need a pawn at the ending to queen, and uh, that knight has some very nice squares. I mean, it, it, it should be a draw. Magnus has indicated from his body language as well that it's going that way. I, I mean, I'm not even sure what he missed, to be honest. I don't think it was a major blunder. I think Lev played fantastically well with that move. I did not expect to, to complicate uh, and give himself some chances, so well played, Lev. Yeah, it was all about those rook manoeuvres earlier. They looked really intricate. It wasn't clear the idea behind them, but there was always um, there was always a plan behind Levon's moves. And now, very nice putting a pawn on the lights where White's king is getting ready to step up the board. And meanwhile, it's going to take Black still a long time to get those white pawns on the left side. Yeah, I, I do feel that this game is going to edge towards a draw, but I do think that White has to be incredibly accurate. So, for instance, now, I mean, I'm not quite sure I understand why Love has allowed Magnus to enter but You with can't his enter king. with your king, that's the problem. Wherever you go with the Black King, there'll be a knight check. check. There'll be a knight fork. Knights are so tricky and just a fortress that's yeah. going for, right? It's pretty much a fortress. Black's pawns, they're all, they're all isolated as well. They're spread out and they are easy targets for the white knight. I don't think Black's in time to protect all his pawns and get in with the Black King. Um, even if you win one pawn in the process, it probably shouldn't be enough. White's King is running over to this side now. And okay, there we go. The, March continues again, no matter where you bring the Black King. If you go this way, there's a check in the center. If you go the other way, there's a check with the White Knight. Get near him uh, in the ending, but I, I'm looking at some of Lev's games as well. Lev must be one of the best endgame players ever. He's, he's got so much experience, and that's something that age helps you with. Uh, I'm probably gonna, he's probably going to lose now after I say that, but uh, let's see. <laughs> More pawns get exchanged. This, yeah. this is only helping the defender. Yeah, and now if Black's King goes and takes the white pawn next to it, then White's Knight will actually go to the edge of the board with a check, and that's a double attack. He'll go back and capture Black's pawn on the c6 square. So yeah, everything, we're about to see that happen. Everything getting traded. This one is just a dead draw now. All right. Then, enough material left to check, mate. Hopefully we're going to make it to the ending of Ding against Jesse Penko. Yeah, it is a draw in this one. 